And uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in South Row. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bridgeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell up the street in um, Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the Senior Center or my seminars, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in South Row, that means right here. They don't want to move in with their kids, you know, in San Diego. They want to go to Holliston. They want to be right here. So the question is, who are the people you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about or want to know about um, to stay right here forever? And so but to find all these great people is my friend, Doug Peck. Doug and I have been doing this show now for a long time, like at least a couple <laughs> yeah, of years. Couple you know? years yeah. yeah, we're becoming legends, you know, we're starting <laughs> to sell the box set of these shows. You know? <laughs> so, so Doug, whom do we have today? We're starting off uh, with a double header this spring, you know. Uh, I thought it would be a good place. These are these are two, I think, very important um, services that are that are available to folks. The first, we're going to spend equal time on both. Uh, I want to introduce Randy Viragas from Boston Senior Medicine and Peter Johnson from Caption Call. And we're going to start with uh, Randy. And find out a little bit what Boston Senior Medicine is all about. This is very unique, and I was really interested to bring her on the show. So welcome, Randy. How are you? I'm great, Doug. Thank you for having me. And uh, nice to meet you, Arthur. Thank you for coming on. Uh -huh. My so pleasure. And... Little... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said, just gonna tell us a little bit about what's Boston Senior Medicine. Yeah, it's a very unique primary care practice. And it is unique because we don't have a brick and mortar clinic. We are literally a mobile primary care practice. So wow. we also only serve seniors, kind of like what you do at Seniors yeah. Helping Seniors. Yes. So it's just a mobile primary care. We go into seniors' homes wherever they live. That could be assisted living or just an or just like a standalone house or or an independent living place. Anywhere mm -hmm. they live, we go. Okay. And what kind of services do you provide? Great question. Um, so like, let's, let's think of Frank and Mary. Let's okay. say, um, let's say Mary has um, dementia. Maybe it's um, Parkinson's uh, brought on dementia. And um, that's kind of heavy for Frank to handle. Mm -hmm. And so Frank has been neglecting his health, just focusing on Mary, like the good mm -hmm. husband that he is. Why and, does this and sound like so familiar? <laughs> why, yeah, why, does, exactly. why, why does this all sound so familiar? Yeah. Go, go ahead. Right. And so um, uh, his neighbor has been uh, watching them and, and noticing Frank's losing his balance. Frank's yawning a lot. Frank's forgetting to take in the mail and it's like sticking out of the mailbox. And he's wondering, does Frank have dementia too? So he walked over and Frank's just exhausted. He's He's had it. Usually that's normal when you're a caregiver, you mm -hmm. neglect yourself to take care of the person who really needs it. Mm -hmm. And so his neighbor happened to know about Boston Senior Medicine mm -hmm. and Frank was saying, oh man, I have to take my wife to the primary care. She needs her you know, medicines uh, reconciled, her Parkinson's is acting up again and we think it's medicine related, which most likely it is. And um, it's a pain to get her in the car. And so luckily his neighbor knew about Boston Senior Medicine and said, why don't you have your primary care practice come to your home? And of course, Frank was delighted and relieved to hear that this even existed and thought he'd never be able to afford that. But luckily when he called, he got me and I said, we accept Medicare. And he had Medicare. So yay, uh, we went out there within seven days met with his wife and realized Mary was um, needing a medicine change. So mm -hmm. because we're owned by a uh, guy who has a doctorate in pharmacology, he feels very comfortable when it comes to medicines and uh, making changes, necessary changes and um, doing med reconciliations for all of our patients. So he knew exactly what to do. But while we were out there, our nurse practitioner noticed that Frank 
um, was really like losing his balance throughout the home, furniture walking and stuff and exhausted and um, said, you know, even though you're not homebound, like a VNA needs somebody to be homebound in order to, to take them. We don't, we're primary care. Um, our tagline is healthy, sick or feeling blue. This primary care comes to you. So we explained that to Frank and he said that he wanted to sign on with our services also. And so the first thing we did is we got him a physical. He hadn't been to a doctor in two years. Mm -hmm. So he really needed that. And um, come to find out he had high cholesterol and all sorts of things. And, and um, he was falling a lot. So we ordered a VNA to come in just for a little while. And he was willing to hang up his keys just for about six weeks while the VNA came in with some nursing and PT to get him stronger. And they also helped her with her with her medicine. So um, that's kind of what we do. Okay. We, we work, we have phlebotomists, we work in a multidisciplinary team. We can bring x-rays, ultrasounds, EKGs. We can do bedside urine tests, which is great because Mm -hmm. Sometimes Mary gets those and it exacerbates behaviors. Mm -hmm. And um, what used to happen is the EMTs would come, she'd be discombobulated and it'd be a very uh, dramatic day. And mm -hmm. now, um, you know, she'd be whisked so. away to the ER only to find out she had a UTI and needed mm -hmm. antibiotics. But now because Boston Senior Medicine is taking care of her, Frank calls us up and says, think there might be something wrong with Mary, it might be a UTI again. When we show up, we bring our bedside urine test, use the dipstick, boop, boop. Within minutes, we know that's exactly what it is. Good call, Frank. And we can write her a script right there for antibiotics. Wow. And uh, so we just bring convenience. And I also like to say, we bring the traditions that people are used to from when they were younger, traditions of the past, Mm -hmm. and the convenience that they used to have in the past with the best of modern medicine today. It's a great combination. Wow. That's terrific. So, so <laughs> Thank you, I so think so too. <laughs> so can I, yeah, I mean, I had this image of, you know, the, the, uh, the classic old doctor that we kind of grew up with, the, the little black bag, except he opens up the bag and there's all these tests coming out of it, you know, and there's, <laughs> right. a, and there's all this other stuff. So can, yeah. can I just ask about, I mean, that sounds great, but you were just mentioning mm -hmm. MRIs and EKGs. So, so what do you mean you're offering those tests? You mean that you're getting them into a local uh, hospital to do those tests? Or, or no, is, we do can't. you actually have this kind, of, this kind of mobile stuff? I didn't know this could happen. I know, isn't that cool? It's all <laughs> mobile. And, and if I said MRI, I'm sorry, we can do EKGs. So like a lot of, a lot of doctors will say, I'll do a house call, but they're kind of just being like the triage person that they'll say like, Hey, Johnny, it does sound like you fell and you might've broken your arm. Come on in for an x-ray or Hey, right. Betty, it does sound like you're having heart palpitations. Why don't you come on in for that EKG? And Oh, Sally, it does sound like you're having gallstones. Why don't you come on in for an ultrasound? We can bring all that equipment into the home and it's not giant it's it's very accessible and you know we just carry it in and we administer it and we do those tests right there now when we do have a phlebotomist come for like the annual physicals or if someone has needs to check their INRs or on blood thinners or maybe they have diabetes and they're trying to manage their um, A1C levels we can do those blood tests, but we do um, take them to a lab and then we'll come back and discuss the results in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same okay. thing that you would do when you went to the doctor. Every, they would right. get sent right. to the lab. They have to get right. sent to the lab. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly, exactly. Yep, so it's just, it's just everything we offer is just conveniently done right in their homes. Mm -hmm. And, and, you do this through, and you're yeah. doing this throughout the state, right? I mean, certainly Southboro is within your uh, catchment area right 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 okay. so um soon it will be statewide right now okay. um the whole worcester area to the east down on the cape and north of boston all over massachusetts but soon i mean all over that area mm -hmm. north and south pretty soon by the end of the year will be statewide i bet okay oh well, good yeah That's terrific. And, and, <laughs> May, may I ask? So, so does and and Medicare pays for that? I mean, I'm just I'm 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 asking the practical question. How how 
does can does Medicare, you know, the Medicare who's always that's always paying attention, like everybody, to you know, how much is this going to cost? How are they managing hey. to pay for these kinds of home visits? Is this some kind of special thing that Medicare does? How, how do they do it? I know, right? Um, we blackmailed them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, no, it's just it's just our business model. We don't have a brick and mortar place. So this is our business model. We only do house calls. We're a house call uh, primary care practice. It's yeah. just pretty cool. And maybe yeah. when this airs, because right now it's it's March 16th. Mm -hmm. um, in April, we'll be accepting more insurances. So you know if you you don't have Medicare, but you have other insurances, call us in April. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so are are you part of? Uh, sorry, Doug. I don't. I didn't mean to. That's be, okay. I just want to watch your time. Are, are you? Yeah. I'm. I, I'm watching. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh, so, are, are do any of the the so-called Medicare Advantage plans include you also? Or Not is it only yet. Medicare traditional Medicare A and B? Right. Traditional Medicare, and it's Part B that that covers uh, physicians in our right. our practice. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sure. And we do keep costs down, even though we have physicians, um, you know, under our practice, these are nurse practitioner uh, driven teams, the nurse right. practitioners lead the team. So you'll exactly where healthcare is supposed to be going, healthcare is yeah. supposed yeah. to be dr dr driving down toward nurse practitioners. And I suppose, you know, once again, I'm thinking, how do they pay for the gas and all this stuff? But of course you do it because you don't own a building. You don't have to pay all this huge amount of rent and you're not paying the heat and all this other right. stuff. Yeah. What an yeah. interesting and, idea. Yeah, and people people still, they go, yeah, but how much does it cost to start it? You know, there's gotta be a startup fee. No, there isn't. There's no <laughs> startup fees. It's just, you wanna yeah. join our practice? And I, I also say to people, we're primary care practice, not a primary care prison. You know, if, <laughs> if you join our practice and for some reason you just long to go to the to your doctor's waiting room and and then you long to go into another room and sit on deli paper wearing nothing but a Johnny, you have that option, you know? <laughs> I didn't mean to preempt the time. So Doug, Doug, so once again, now I'm watching the time going, oh, but we've got a couple okay. more minutes. Doug, your, your question. No, no, I'm good. Thanks, Randy. I, this was really helpful. I think uh, I think I, I, I when people go to your website, I know you have a little video there and you have a lot of information on the website. So we'll we'll have all that information for them uh, to be able to access as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank welcome. you. That was terrific. I, Thank you. <laughs> Peter, this to might Peter. Be a, I, this might be a tough act to follow, Peter. But I know, uh, I know. know. Pressure's Peter's, on. Peter's is a, is a, in a way a much simpler deal, but very important for people uh, who are who are hard of hearing. So Peter's with a company called Caption Call. Peter, tell us a little bit about what Caption Call is. Sure. So uh, Caption Call uh, um, is a company that um, provides captioning telephones and mobile captioning apps to folks that have hearing loss that uh, need captions to use the phone um, effectively. And so all of our products and all of our services is actually part of a federally funded program to benefit people who have hearing loss. So all of our products and services are no cost to the consumer. Uh, the federal program pays for all the services and all the products. So they pay uh, for the actual physical equipment as well as the services to, to install it. That's right. That's right. Okay. There is no cost to the consumer. That's right. And um, so I'm having trouble picturing this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, it just so happens, right? We, so we have here. <laughs> Look at that. This is incredible. There is the caption call captioning phone. And actually, if I just uh, dial someone, you'll see that. Uh, this is a, a demonstration of what uh, the uh, captioning phone call would look like on our phone. And you can see when the person on the other end picks up the phone and starts to talk, the caption call user can actually just glance oh down God. the screen <laughs> and they can read what the person is saying. So, you know, maybe they're, they're, they can get maybe 50% of what the person's saying. They can just glance down at the screen and fill in the blanks. 
what the person's saying. And so this is what the captions look like. That's so, terrific. And we also have uh, for all the smartphones, Android and the iPhone, we also have a mobile captioning app. So you can caption your cell phone calls as well. So, so that, again, this is, this is through this a federally funded program, right? I mean, that uh, actually uh, the telephone users themselves pay for, right? Is there a tax or something that? Yeah, so when this program was created, it was part of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And, uh, and yeah, part of that, part of that legislation uh, was there was a small fee that was paid that was placed on people's phone bills. Okay. And actually, that fee is what funds the program. That's correct. Okay. Yep. So yep. if somebody wants this, what do they do? We're going to put your information up. Are you the person that they would call in the area? Um, yep, they could. They could contact okay. me directly, and we can put my information up. Um, you can also, also uh, go to the Caption Call website, which is captioncall.com. Okay. And, and you'll see there's a link right on our homepage to order the phone. Okay. And what will happen then is that after you've placed your order, we will uh, call you within a, a couple of business days to uh, set up an installation appointment where one of our technicians will come to your house with the phone and we'll set it up and show you how to use it. Okay. Uh, we also do offer um, to mail the phone and you can do a self installation if you prefer. Okay. But you've been doing this throughout the last year. So you're your COVID safety uh, yep. for going into people's homes and everything. Yeah, yeah, okay. our technicians, yeah, follow all those guidelines, correct. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, good. Yep. So, yeah, so it's it's a so wonderful program uh, to help so, those. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So to, so to get one of these phones, do you, do you kind of self-qualify? Like you call and say, I can't hear, and so send me a phone? Or, or is there some kind of criterion in, in terms of the level of their deafness that they need to meet? Um, mm -hmm. or, and, and is there any kind of income criterion? Is there, is there any kind of you know, application or form that they need to, sh to show that they have, for whatever mm -hmm. reason, a need, right? Right. Nope, there is no minimum criterion of, uh, as far as the hearing loss goes. Um, it's, uh, uh, the individual is certifying that the, their hearing loss is such that they need captions to use the phone uh, effectively. And there is no cost uh, for, for the product or the service. So yeah, and they uh, can just go to our, our website uh, to order the phone or they could call, caption call. We can put our toll free number up uh, with the show information and uh, speak to a customer service rep and order the phone. And then we uh, will set up the installation appointment. With the and, and it's not through insurance, Arthur. Is that correct? It's not through Medicare or Medicaid. It's the federally funded uh, right. program, so it's not insurance related. No, no, it's not. No. You so, don't so, when, so one, so one other. So, and now may, maybe I'm on behalf of Frank and Mary. I'm being, be, I'm being too picky. But <laughs> what if I've got some um, sight issues also? Because as I was just looking at your phone and I was seeing the scroll come down. Yep. I was saying to myself, you know, if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm having a little trouble seeing that, you know, cause I'm, it, cause this is going to be moving right along. Right. Cause it's going to be scrolling as the person is talking. Right. Yes. So can, can you get it with it, with a larger caption or the, or, or is, or is the phone the, the have that just that caption? Yeah, no, that's that a good style. question. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is, uh, you do have the ability to make the text bigger and brighter than the standard captions that I was showing you. So that is a setting on the phone where if you if there are some sight issues, you could make them a little bit bigger and brighter. Now, the speed of the scrolling, that is all based upon how fast the person is talking on the other end. <laughs> so you could just simply tell them, can you please slow down? And the captions yeah, will then slow down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Because, yep. because of course, they the, the the people on the other end wouldn't wouldn't be alerted in any way to the fact that this was happening. So you need right. to be telling them, right? And look, and yeah, you know, this is one of the things that the technician will go over with them is when you're talking to someone maybe for the first time, using the caption call phone, you can tell them, you know, I, I'm relying on captions, so I might, uh, my answer might be delayed two or three seconds while I read the captions. So this may be something that that Randy is is referring to a lot of people, right? While she's in doing that home visit, 
Absolutely. And she's like, and she's, yeah. and she's, and she's saying, and she's watching Frank kind of going, what, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, by the way, if you thought about it, because at least, it, no, once again, I think, you know, so, so, um, um, we, we kind of identify, Doug and I kind of identify with this because we're getting older ourselves, you know, but, Me too. but you know, it's just like having, and, and, and I think we all appreciate the fact that, you know, one of the, one of the difficulties when you're having hearing problems, right, is you comp, you, if, if somebody's live, you compensate, right, because you're watching their lips or whatever, but the big problem is a lot of times over the phone, right, right, right. right. And, yeah, you, and, you, and, and you're almost tempted to kind of avoid having to deal with the phone just mm -hmm. because you can't hear well right, yeah, and, right. It, and this is and this is such a it's so handy and it's such a minor it's not an inconvenience right. really at all it's just really helping you right yeah. and you're not typing i mean it doesn't rely on you having to type back you're just speaking regularly back but you're able to watch it and and have a conversation and as we know as more and more people are getting stuck at home and still will be at home this is a real benefit to be able to talk to families, uh, mm -hmm. to doctors, to pharmacists, to whatever you need to, and not have to worry about, am I gonna miss you know, some information because I can't hear them. There's too right. much background noise, or right. it's just not, you can't turn the phone up high enough you right. know, for things. So that's why I, I, I thought it was really appropriate to have, uh, to have Peter on and talk about it, uh, because it can be, like you said, it's a small, thing but it can be a big deal for somebody who is particularly home alone or right. just with another one other person that needs to be in touch with the outside world but right. can't because of their hearing loss right right absolutely and, yeah, that, and once really again the isolation so and once yeah. again there's no cost for the device and there's no ongoing this doesn't affect your phone bill no nope. no nope. whoever you're paying your phone bill to it doesn't affect it in nope. any way no nope. no absolutely it's, not as the commercial says, it's free, 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 free. <laughs> <laughs> so that's even a better deal. You know, you probably paid for some of it anyway when you've used your phone all these years. So you may as right. well take advantage of it. Right. So right. It's like your so. phone, your phone dollars at work. You know? Yeah. Good yeah. So, I think, so, so as, as I think when, but when we, before we started, Randy, you would ask kind of what's the point of this show? This is the point of this show. This is exactly the point of this show mm -hmm. is, is. You know, if you're, you know, if you're Frank and Mary living in South Burnley, your house, and you're kind of living like, how in the world would you ever know that any of this exists? You know, this phone right. service, who knew? Yeah. Who knew, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, and it's just hard to believe. It's hard to believe, you know, it's like, it's totally free. And it allows you to be dealing with a really important issue. And you don't have to show you're like totally deaf. You don't have to be like, you know, passing some kind of a test. And there's no asset issue. And who knew that you could actually rethink the whole way you see your doctor? I think certainly as a result of the pandemic, people have 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 been have rethought the way in which they communicate with their doctor's office, right? Because they're zooming to their doctor now. But then there are all those issues. I know I was talking to a um a, 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 I have a wonderful geriatric care manager in um, Martha's Vineyard where I do a lot of work. And she mm -hmm. said, a lot of what she's doing now is going to her client's house so they can do their doctor's appointment because, because the doctor is talking to the, to the patient, but mm -hmm. the patient is kind of not getting it, you know, yeah. and, and, or, or, maybe, or maybe the doctor wants to check something like, a, like blood pressure or something, and there's no way to do that, right? Yeah. Right. Well, so I tell you what... It's an yeah. accommodation, but it's nothing nearly as good as having the doctor show up with the little black bag that's got all that stuff in it. Exactly. Pe people keep saying, will you do telemedicine? Will you do telehealth? And I say, well, yeah, but that kind of defeats the point. We can come to you. The reason those other doctors are doing that is because they can't reach you, you know? Right. And we've right. actually gotten a lot of referrals from, from people who who can't get through all those portals, you know, those big hospitals, you have to jump through and remember like five different passwords and usernames in order to talk oh, to yeah. your doctor. So oh, yeah, you got to enlist your grandson from college. To help <laughs> exactly. begin, right? That's to so true. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. a nice, con it's a nice concept. But once mm. again, as Doug and I constantly face, these are great concepts for the tax savvy, you know, yeah. Yeah. But, but I'm yeah. still into the kind of 2.0 world and the rest of the world is at 15.6, you know, and, and so, you know, to, 
try to actually do that stuff is just really, really hard. Yeah. yeah. So, so as I mentioned, when we started, my job is to keep time and, and provide comic relief. And I'm watching the clock and I know that we're, that we're getting close to the end, yes. right? Okay. So I, I just want to really thank the both of you and to the folks who are watching. These are two examples of things. Take down the contact information, check it out, just check it out. Or, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in both of these cases, like tell your friends, because if you don't need these things, I guarantee you, if you're Frankie Mary, you know people who are going, what, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, and exactly. to tell them that they have this ability as a result of this, to be able to use the phone again, right? Mm -hmm. Or to tell them, you know, that, that they could actually have, you know, the nurse practitioner coming to their house, and they could just be doing, as opposed to even the hassle of going to the doctor and the travel. Mm -hmm. This is really great. This is, and Doug, so thank you so much. Thank Doug, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you very thank much, you. Peter. My this pleasure. was great. Thank you very much. Well, well, Folks, we hope yeah. you enjoy this. Now I know, you know, Doug keeps trying to what, kind of one up and getting these great guests. So who knows what the next show will bring. So thank you very much thank for you. watching and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Southboro. Thank you very yeah. much. Yay. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.